In the last episode, the power dynamics of Japan were shattered as Oda Nobunaga defeated Imagawa Yoshimoto's grand army en route to the capital, slaying him and crushing his forces at Okehezama. Now, in the wake of Yoshimoto's death, the war for Kawanakajima resumes as Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kenshin embark on the greatest of their battles. Before we begin, I just want to say, if you have not watched episode 16 yet, I highly recommend you do so first before watching this episode, as it details the first half of the Kawanakajima conflict, which includes the first three battles. So then, picking up where we left off, 1557 saw a temporary end to the war between Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kenshin. After their clash at Uenohara, Shingen and Kenshin both withdrew. Once again, their main bodies had not engaged, and only the Takeda vanguard had met with the Uesugi rearguard. Thus, the third battle had ended just as the first two had, appearing to be nothing more than a mere skirmish. Shingen's third attempt to defeat Kenshin and press north was once again foiled. However, he was now under the realization that bypassing the Uesugi defensive network at Kawanakajima was not a viable option. His next bet would be on dominating the plane, using the castles he already owned along with new additions to increase his control over the area and use this superiority to bring Kenshin to his demise. Yet it would be some time before this new plan of his would come to fruition. In the meantime, Kenshin had gone to war against the Hojo in what would be the largest struggle between the Uesugi and the Hojo since the siege of Kawagoe Castle in 1546. If we remember back to episode 12, Kenshin, who was at that point still known as Nagao Kagetora, used political savvy to become one with the Uesugi clan and be named Kanrei of Kanto. Kanrei, which can be translated to Shogunal Deputy put Kenshin as the true overlord of the Kanto region, although by this time, the Hojo clan had taken most of Kanto into their grip. Wishing to display his dominance, in the spring of 1561, Kenshin led an army against the Hojo, seizing Matsuyama Castle in Musashi, along with Kamakura, before marching on Odawara Castle, the power base of the Hojo clan. Hojo Ujiyasu would quickly set out to meet Kenshin and break the siege of Odawara. And on top of this, Takeda Shingen, showing support for his Hojo allies, marched his own army into Kozuke, threatening Uesugi holdings to the north. Left with no other option, Kenshin was forced to withdraw. Yet it was then that Shingen turned his attention back to the Kawanakajima plain for the first time in four years. But now, he was returning to a vastly different Kawanakajima than their last encounter. In 1556, Sanada Yukitaka had secured Amakazari Castle for the Takeda clan. And of course, one year later, Baba Nobuharu had seized Katsurayama in the prelude to the third battle of Kawanakajima. Since then, Takeda forces had captured Takanashi Castle, and under Shingen's orders had constructed a new castle called Kaizu on the plains. What was once a solid Uesugi defensive network was now a hotly contested border between the two clans. In June of 1561, Shingen launched an attack on Warigadake Castle near the Echigo border, capturing it and causing Kenshin concern. Anticipating another invasion by the Takeda, Kenshin mustered an army of 18,000 and marched towards Kawanakajima, leaving a token force behind to guard the western Echigo border in case Shingen tried to completely outflank the Uesugi and attack through Eichu. Kenshin took his usual position at Zenkuji, yet understanding how different the plane had become, opted for a new strategy. Leaving 5,000 men behind at Zenkuji to act as a rearguard, 
Kenshin led the rest of his forces across the rivers and up to a hill known as Saijo-san, which overlooked the newly constructed Kaizu Castle. Kosaka Masanobu, the commander of Kaizu Castle, learned of the Uesugi movements and immediately sent word to Shingen, who was currently home in Kai Province. Through a coordinated system of signal fires, Shingen was informed of the Uesugi march in just a matter of hours. Shingen quickly set out at the head of 16,000 men, and made haste towards Kawanakajima, keeping the Chikumagawa between him and Kenshin. He would eventually set up his position across the rivers from the Uesugi army and Kaizu Castle, a location which also worked to block Kenshin off from his rote home. It is here that Shingen amassed his forces, swelling his army to 20,000 strong. The two armies then sat for several days of no movement, until finally, Shingen did something. He set out from his encampment and headed right into Kaizu Castle, all with no response from Kenshin. Once inside Kaizu, Shingen consulted with his generals on how to lure Kenshin off of the hill. One of Shingen's top generals, Yamoto Kansuke, would offer up a master plan, which is often referred to as Operation Woodpecker. Just as a woodpecker strikes the bark of a tree to lure out insects to eat, the Takeda army at night, under the cover of darkness, would split in two, with Shingen leading 8,000 men to the center of the Kawanakajima plain, while Kosaka Masanobu would lead another 12,000 around to the south of Saijo-san, where he would then assault the Uesugi army and drive them down the hill into the waiting jaws of Shingen's forces. Shingen agreed to the plan, thus late on the night of October 17th, the Takeda forces began to move. Shingen's portion of the army most notably included Takeda family members, such as his brothers and son, while the force led by Masanobu to assault Saijo-san included figures such as Baba Nobuharu and Sanada Yukitaka. Things began perfectly as Shingen silently moved across the rivers and in total darkness established a formation upon the plain. Meanwhile, Masanobu's forces quietly crept up the side of Saijo-san. However, as dawn began to break and the Takeda forces reached the top of the hill, they found it to be completely deserted. For Kenshin had moved his army long before Masanobu's troops had even begun their climb. Instead, Kenshin had maneuvered his forces down the hill earlier in the night, and as Shingen set up his position upon the center of the plain, Kenshin launched a surprise attack, ordering a full charge, smashing into Shingen's left flank which was under the command of his brother, Takeda Nobushige. It appears that Kenshin was simply going to reposition himself back at Zenkoji, yet when he discovered the Takeda army forming up on the center of the plain, his plans changed to that of attack. Kenshin's vanguard, led by Kakizaki Kagei, were quick to cut their way through Nobushige's unit, eventually killing him. Kagei's force then fell back as fresh Uesugi samurai poured in to maintain the pressure. While this was going on, another Uesugi unit smashed into the Takeda right flank, and once again, as soldiers began to tire, Kenshin would rotate them out with fresh troops. This tactic of rotating reinforcements allowed the Uesugi army to break through the Takeda front lines. For the first time in all of their encounters, the main bodies of Shingen and Kenshin met, and as more soldiers flew into the battle, the bodies began to pile up as the Takeda forces fought desperately against the unrelenting push of the Uesugi. Although the previous three battles of Kawanakajima had been minor engagements, it was apparent that this clash would be a meat grinder. At the center, Shingen tried desperately to hold his army together, remarkably keeping communication between himself and his commanders open. Yet, being heavily outnumbered, the Takeda were quickly being destroyed. Eventually, Uesugi Samurai broke through towards Shingen's headquarters, and with Kenshin leading the charge, one of the most epic moments in the entire Sengoku Jidai occurred. Kenshin rode his horse directly towards Shingen's position and began attacking Shingen himself. This was the first time the two had ever met face to face. Shingen, unable to draw his sword fast enough, instead used his war fan to parry Kenshin's blade. Kenshin repeatedly tried to land an attack on Shingen, yet Shingen was able to hold him off until finally his bodyguards rushed to his aid and caused Kenshin to spur his horse out of the action. 
With things rapidly falling apart for the Takeda, Yamamoto Kansuke took the blame upon himself for the failure of his woodpecker plan. Thus, he grabbed his spear and rushed into the thick of the fighting, where he would be severely wounded. After which, he would drag himself away from the combat and commit seppuku. Yet, as defeat seemed almost certain for the Takeda, Masanobu's woodpecker force charged down from Saijo-san to launch a counterattack against the Uesugi. Kenshin had expected this and thus left a unit of 1,000 men to defend against Masanobu. Yet it wouldn't be enough to stop him from pushing past to aid Shingen's force as it fell apart. Now being vastly outnumbered himself by the addition of fresh Takeda troops, Kenshin ordered a full retreat. Thus, the fourth battle of Kawanakajima came to an end. And surprisingly, the Takeda can be observed as the true victors, driving the Uesugi from the field. However, Kenshin would still hold an upper hand overall, as massive casualties would prove too much for Shingen to overcome and continue northward. In fact, the fourth battle of Kawanakajima would go down as one of the bloodiest battles of the period, with it being estimated that Kenshin lost around 70% of his army, while Shingen lost around 60% along with several of his generals. The two would not meet again until three years later, in 1564. Although by then, the Takeda grip over the Kawanakajima plain was firmly secure. Thus, the disadvantaged Kenshin refused to engage, and instead, both armies merely sat across from one another, until finally, Kenshin gave the order to withdraw. The two great rivals would never clash with each other ever again. It appears they had come to an understanding. Shingen was an unstoppable force, yet Kenshin was an immovable object. And so the two knew their place, after what would be remembered as the Five Battles of Kawanakajima. In the end, Kenshin held the line against the Takeda. Thus, Shingen would never be able to launch a successful invasion into Ichigo. Although it was not a total defeat for the Takeda, as by the conclusion of their conflict, the Kawanakajima plane was now under Shingen's control, causing Shinano to essentially fall totally to the Takeda clan. So, what can we learn? After the third battle of Kawanakajima in 1557, Shingen set out to strengthen his position over the plane. Four years later, in 1561, he felt it was time to resume action launching a raid into the north. Kenshin would respond by moving his army down and strategically setting up position at a hill overlooking the Takeda Kaizu Castle. Shingen would immediately march north to meet him. Following Operation Woodpecker, laid out by Yamamoto Kansuke, the Takeda would attempt to lure Kenshin off of the hill. However, Kenshin would move first and launch a surprise attack against a smaller divided Takeda force at dawn. Kenshin would nearly kill Shingen and secure victory, right before the Takeda Woodpecker force charged back down the hill and caused Kenshin to withdraw. This fourth battle of Kawanakajima would go down as one of the largest in the conflict and also one of the bloodiest samurai battles of all time. It would be three years before the two would meet again in 1564, although this final time neither side would engage by the end of their war. Kenshin had held the Takeda out of Echigo, yet Shingen had secured the majority of Shinano. In the next episode, Matsudaira Motoyasu moves to deal with the Ikoiki threat in Mikawa province, while the Hojo clan will clash with the Satomi once again at the second battle of Konodai. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.